Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech Podcast series. This is Lakshit Pan from Azure Developer Community. And today we are going to, you know, have this podcast on some amazing topic that will be Indian or maybe, you know, amazing curated scaling platform for the for the children's of ages of 6 to 16 or may offering, you know, multiple courses to learn and upskill themselves. And for the same, we have Nikhil here from the team. And first of all, Nikhil, if you could introduce yourself to everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Nikhil Vaska. I'm uh, the co-founder and CTO of uh, Ulipsu. So uh, now I, I completed my graduation in 2013 and because of uh, a passion in education, uh, we immediately kick-started uh, you know, our education venture. So I, I personally have been uh, a trainer, a teacher. Uh, I have I've trained more than a lakh students. I have personally trained more than 30,000 odd teachers. On, on multiple uh, you know uh, educational content so myself so I have I've been on the ground uh, taught kids taught uh, the teachers work with schools uh, to understand the ground reality of the problem and we have built uh, the platform based on uh, the the core problems that that the schools are facing that the students are facing or the parents uh, and teachers are, are facing on the ground right. so uh, this is a brief introduction about me uh, and and yeah. Yeah, thanks for the lovely introduction, Nikhil. Uh, I really appreciate that. And you know, to start this podcast, I'll take this from here. I want to know about your journey in a you know very crisp manner. How you can how you came up with this idea and tell yet you know how has been your experience building this idea and the product. We we started with as I mentioned, we started way back in 2013. Uh, you know, uh, though Kidvento, the company, the parent company, officially started in 2017. So we were on the ground uh, doing a lot of research, understanding the segment, understanding the students. So we, we should not be deciding in a boardroom of what, what the product, what the problem that we are solving. So we went on the ground, did a lot of research for three to four years, uh, you know, while, while training the students and teachers on, uh, you know, on various parts of hands-on learning to experiential learning to whatnot. So we, we understood the problem, uh, the real problem that there is in the in the school segment in the in the uh, segment of education for that matter and uh, you know then then we uh, started building ulipsu so the problem that we are addressing is that you know in in academic level or in in the school curriculum level there are multiple uh, private partners or there are multiple government policies which are ensuring the standard uh, content standard skill or standard learning in the academic part of it but uh, what is today called as uh, co-curricular, extracurricular, right. uh, you know, which it should not be. Ideally, it should not be called co-curricular, extracurricular, but it is called co-curricular, extracurricular because of the focus that it has been given to certain segments, uh, which at times in life are the real problems that, uh, you know, as, as students we face. You know, exactly. math is taught as a subject, language is taught as a subject, uh, or English is taught as a subject. So it is never looked at in the perspective of a skill or even for that, for that matter, art and craft. So uh, while, while in school, uh, you know, we would always see the art and craft, uh, uh, you know, uh, periods would be taken away by the math teachers or, uh, you know, for, for the language or any other subject that is not completed. So yeah. the, the segment, which is today called as extracurricular, we would want to bring that to limelight and call it skills. Right. So that is that is the transformation that we are bringing in uh, because the the new age parents or the new age kids, uh, you know, are not just happy with the the core academics or core uh, just the core academics. Okay. So parents and kids would want the twenty first century skills uh, from from the advanced skills like from coding to artificial intelligence, which is in limelight uh, recently uh, to the the application oriented skills of the mathematics that they have learned in school the basic mathematics or the application oriented of the language which is the communication part of it how about building a storytelling uh, program how about building a story writing program for kids not just learning uh, prepositions and uh, grammar part of it Right, so yeah, this is the gap yeah. that we are bridging. The application focus is what we are building uh, through Ulipso. 
yeah the your focus is at very critical point and you know i must say because you know i have been in the, in this industry at tech industry where i also train and teach people but uh, you know to be very honest this is a very tough nut to crack especially when you are you know catering 6 to 16 that is a very very tough nut to crack because students are still in that age where they are they have to be the way they are you not know, entirely dependent on the parents where there is you know such tight according to them that ecosystem or maybe uh that's kind they are in a hoax that this uh maybe this education system is all what it is all about so i want to know how do you de- develop the curriculum who who are the people behind this are these you know employees of your company or do you you know expect do you you know entertain some extra you know professors or maybe you know uh maybe it can be industrial it's of any you know any big company that they are working on so how do you get all these things right so lakshit as you rightly pointed out uh, education segment is a tough nut to crack exactly. because of two reasons one uh, you know the the diversity that we have especially in india so exactly. with, with uh, the learning diversity that we have is the first part and the second part uh, is to achieve the learning outcomes side of it which mm-hmm. becomes highly critical uh, in education in any education program or product that we build right so uh, and that is why it is also fun to uh, you know be a part of something which which solves this right so uh, that is that is the enthusiasm that uh, it brings on table to solve the hard nut that is not cracked before that's what we are doing so we have uh, expert subject matter experts from all of the 15 skills that we uh, at the moment uh, are providing so these uh, subject matter experts are in house resources we have held excellent uh, resources who who have graduation master graduation and uh, you know a lot of uh, doctorates as well in our team so who are developing all of these curriculum and content we have learning psychologists in our team we have uh, you know uh, doctorate in in particular skills for example life science as a skill you know uh, being in this world it is very important for the kids to know the environment the world that we are in how the plant animal the ecosystem is affecting us so we have a doctorate uh, who is uh, building content and curriculum to teach kids on what should be there in life science and how kids can uh, achieve certain learning outcomes based on the learning psychologies that uh, we have researched on and built on so we have expert uh, you know subject matter experts for for all the skills that we are uh, you know uh, presently doing and all of it is in house curated content we outsource 0% of our content 100% okay. of our content is built in us okay that's great and uh, you know i wanted to you know even you know go, go deeper down i just exploring how is, is the model of learning so if i'm a parent uh, should will you reach out to me as a parent or there will be any online course where you will be promoting or as a student you will directly provide so how this is it you know direct b to c or maybe how this works i mean one one fundamental problem that we saw is working with schools right so we okay. we had experience of working with schools and schools had this problem of the a lot of schools want to provide holistic learning to uh, students but they are right. not able to uh, because of the teacher constraint they cannot find uh, so many teachers in in tier 2 tier 3 or even in tier 1 for uh, for that matter so they are not able to find expert teachers that is the problem that we are solving for the schools so we majorly partner with schools directly uh, we are not going b2c at the moment so we will be launching b2c soon but we are going working with schools we are working with more than 400 odd schools in our first year of operation uh, and we are very aggressively uh, you know growing that way as well so we solve the problem through the school so school being our our uh, flag bearer or influencer for the program so school opts okay. our program and we provide uh, you know it to student and the learning journey would start something like this so initially uh, we we have 15 different skills that uh, you know we we provide it to school and the school uh, in consultation with parents it tends in consultation with kids as well uh, for for higher age group of 8 9 10th right so they will be choosing three skills that they would want by exploring all of these skills so uh, you know initially they explore all the 15 they choose three out of Uh, the fifteen, and then go deep into those three throughout the year. So now here is here is the case because you know 
when i was in a school i remember those days whenever someone used to come in my school from you know outside the organization i used to be very excited but you know we have seen due to covid pandemic due to you know all these the 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 breakthrough of the the these two three years what we have seen is the online courses are a bit disrupted so you know you know the you know the credibility of online courses has been a little bit lost so how you are dealing with this and especially uh, you know when you go when you you know uh, you said you directly di directly talk with the schools right so how does this fit in the curriculum so is there it's, it's something like kind of extra classes or was it through throughout our program something that we are eliminating is the extra side of it we we are okay. bringing this into the core curriculum side of it that's right so right. That's right. Uh, i mean as as i mentioned before extra curricular co curricular is what we are trying to eliminate out of the system okay. we are we are educating the schools as well to include this inside the curriculum of the school inside the timetable of the class so uh, this is how it is working uh, and the second part as you rightly uh, mentioned the pandemic a lot of education companies started in pandemic and went away immediately after the pandemic uh, has ended yeah. because of the screen time to also uh, there is a screen time fatigue uh, that is already there in the system so we are also trying to address this while while every other education company uh, or every other uh, technology platform is is calling for engagement strategies uh, we are designing disengagement strategies so we are only allowing certain level of screen time after which we say go back uh, you know go out there play go out there read a book to so what not so we we lock students out of the platform after after 40 minutes per day we don't let them use more than 40 minutes per day and okay. because we are concerned about students health as well so we have such disengagement strategy uh, you know uh, to to disengage students from our platform right so this is this is a new approach that we have taken considering fully considering uh, you know the health of the student so if we start caring about the health of the student uh, you know parents don't have to worry about it or the teachers or school so this is how we are approaching by being truly customer centric and the second part is uh, i mentioned about the learning outcome side of it we are equally focusing on the engagement side of it right so uh, our content is so engaging that uh, kids kids would love to watch uh, the content that we have and we have a blended approach of of how uh, learning is done not just through uh, the online part of it students will first watch uh, the content online they'll do some activities online at the same time they go back home do some activities offline as well so uh, if if there is a mathematics concept that we are teaching uh, let's say applied mathematics concepts that we are teaching the tips and tricks of uh, doing addition subtraction multiplication division the fast track uh, calculation if you are teaching in uh, classroom so we are asking uh, students to go back home create a project on uh, you know generating an electricity bill of their home uh, before the actual electricity bill comes in so they calculate all the devices what what is the uh, devices consume and what not so based on that student generates an electricity bill this is an off this is pure offline activity this is nothing to do with screen so equal amount of offline activity is what uh, we are concentrating on as much as there is online activity this is where we are going through a blended approach i would say or a hybrid approach so this is helping us really well to solve the uh, problem of learning at the same time screen time yeah that's great you have designed a fantastic curriculum i believe and i have you know i was just exploring you know how your to i was just doing my dry run to record this podcast i was doing the, some examples that i the really nice content you have curated also uh, at this so just a follow up question on the same yeah. the courses are self paced they are so how do you how if someone has a doubt some student has a doubt will they reach out to you know the, to the portal or the chat there is a chat system or will they reach out to that college faculty where they are dealing with this because you are directly reaching out to the college or maybe the schools also yeah so we we i mean all the problems that we are addressing we we are addressing through multi multi faceted way it is not a single solution that we are uh, focusing on because we believe that any single solution will have uh, a drawback that that might be addressed so first thing that we do is train teachers on 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 the platform on the content uh, all the teachers of the school the first uh, approach is to solve that through the teachers right the, i mean that also at times teachers might or might not might not Uh, be aware of technology skills like coding artificial intelligence or robotics or any of such uh, advanced technology uh, content they might not be aware of 
the second feature that we have on the uh, doubts is that we have generated faqs where uh, you know kids can chat with the system and it will it will address the doubts of the students that the questions that are that are already there we have created large uh, bank of questions uh, you know where where any doubts of students we have already uh, you know uh, considered that and created these questions and answers through to which we are trying to address that this is the second even then if the doubt is not solved uh, we give a chat support where it will come to our sme and our sme will uh, answer that doubt for the student okay that's fantastic and you know so i i believe you, you know you must be getting the government support as well because nowadays government are you know mostly promoting all these co sorry the curricular activities that you are specially focusing on so uh, i just so can you share some insights or maybe the data the impact level of skilling education or the overall academic performance that increases if you have any metrics in your mind so I, the, my question is here how do you what are the success metrics for you like is it the number of students enrolled or number of quality teachers you are engaging or you are dealing with in your in house or you know is there any you know the model or maybe you know some hands on model that you are providing so number of times or number of students has built this or xx model so what is this i mean the government level uh, support is immense uh, i mean if not directly to ulipsu uh, to the segment uh, you know kill as a segment inside school inside yeah. college or inside education for that matter right so kill uh, the new national education policy uh, highly speaks about this so uh, even the national education policy also says do not differentiate between the curricular co curricular extra curricular bring it all under a single umbrella and and focus on all of it is what national education policy says yeah. so right. from the national education policy there is a new national curriculum framework that is being framed which focuses highly on this and all the cbse schools are are now asked to uh, provide cbse skill modules at least choose one skill module per year uh, per student is what cbse has uh, asked all the cbse schools to do and which we are catering to so we are providing uh, the solution which which uh, helps the school uh, support get the cbse uh, you know accreditation through uh, skill skill modules as well so this is this is a fantastic support for the domain uh, from the government policy level i would say the national education policy and the new national curriculum framework right so so the, the second part of uh, what you asked what is your success, success metrics right so we ideally want a student to learn up to three skills per year not just one okay so this is this is what we uh, are focusing on we are not focusing on a single skill because it is in an exploratory stage uh, in the first year when the student wants it student a kid does not know what his interest areas are so they are exploring now so we ask them to choose up to three skills per year uh, up to around 30 hours of learning per uh, learning online per year and up to 70 hours of learning offline per year so approximately around 100 hours of learning is what we focus on and our success metric is not student watching the content student watching the content i would say is is a by product or is a small uh, part of our success but our actual success is the number of project the student does in a year the application of what he has learned uh, yeah. in the video Uh, that he does go back home right so uh, for example i mentioned about the electricity bill generation by a student right so that is one project likewise we are expecting students to do up to 30 projects in a year so the number of projects that they do in a year the number of hands on activities that they do in a year is our success metric and not how much time he has spent on our platform nor uh, you know how many courses he has watched so uh, you know our, our our success rate is defined on the students ability to apply the learning that he has learned through our platform yeah so for I'm this we up. do a pre yeah, and post ahead. assessment side of it so uh, you know we we show a very clear uh, you know uh, learning outcome of uh, you know measurement or growth rate uh, in the learning uh, you know through the pre and post assessments that we do yeah and i personally have been a firm believer of you know the success metrics that you are discussing about it's all about the projects and the hands on experience that you get and even if in, if it's a, it's a uh, it's about college or school or whatever it is if you are building some right on right hands hands on sites uh, on site projects then definitely one can learn anything and uh, 
so you have discussed about yeah, you are targeting 15 different domains or maybe 15 different sectors now uh, because i have particularly worked in the industry i have been exp you know I, so i wanted to know is there any secret sauce how do you manage all this because managing in the education industry in an tech platform with 15 different domains is very hectic at the same time because you have to you won't try to miss out on anything right you won't out miss out to you won't uh, you know you won't think that a student should you know don't consider this or maybe don't want you to miss so how i would like to know what is the secret sauce to manage everything the eco entire ecosystem that you have so uh, one one secret sauce i would say uh, in in the entire system is is the passion for education right so every single person who is developing who is part of development of content goes to school teaches kids so that that has been the secret sauce of ours uh, you know the passion in education uh, of of the every single individual uh, who is contributing to creating the content it is not just one person we we have uh, 230 people who are working on on creating content uh, day in day out we create up to 40 hours of content every month right so uh, you know it it is the team which which is passionate uh, enough which who are considering we will provide kids what we didn't get in our school uh, what what we uh, did not get as an opportunity to learn uh, while we were uh, you know kids while while we were in school those opportunities are what we are providing for a kid who would want to be an artist we are providing uh, opportunity for him to learn art and be an artist for a kid who would want to be a musician we are providing that opportunity uh, through our platform kids have learned ukulele kids have learned keyboard kids have learned guitar so now we are introducing flute as well. So, you know, an opportunity to learn anything that a student wishes to learn is what we are providing. And passion to, uh, you know, do that uh, is is what our team has uh, internally. And that is what uh, is driving our entire operations. And because there is passion, uh, you know, there, there is a lesser requirement for anybody to have uh, you know too much of control on, on the system or anything like that so that that is becoming very easy to to for us to kind of manage our operations internal operations at the same time uh, having expert in each domain which is critical i mean i i absolutely don't uh, create a single lane of content today i just pass the vision right, right? so uh, since i'm not expert in in the area of probably music art or, or, or you know certain other domains I'm, I'm i have expertise in technology right. i have expertise in uh, mathematics so i i contribute in in that domain but uh, where i do not have expertise at the same time uh, you know uh, since since all of our subject matter experts are have, have huge experience in the domain that they are teaching in so that is what is solving uh, majority of our problems uh, and and that is also solving students' problems. Day in, day out, we come and uh, we do something. We know where and how this is going to impact students. So some corner of uh, uh, a tier three city uh, in in some part of uh, the nation, uh, a kid is accessing the content that we have developed uh, in here, sitting here. So the impact is directly seen here. So that that keeps us motivated as a team, and uh, you know we we are not facing any challenges managing 15 and we are now uh, you know planning to go even wider from 15 yeah so that's we, very nice and yeah and when you have you know good people around it definitely there is no challenge you can that, that you have that there's a, always another milestone that you can achieve obviously and and you have also mentioned about your middle east expansion could you please throw some lights on that as well i would love to know how you are building and what are your thought process about this as I mentioned, we are solving a bigger problem of uh, making skill available and accessible yeah. for everyone, right? So right. Uh, our, our whole brand proposition is learn what you wish to. Learn and wish are uh, two keywords of, of interest here. So uh, we will ensure that kids learn, specifically learn in their interest area. So this is this is our brand proposition or brand promise as well. Right. So when we look at the problem of learn and wish, so it is a global problem. It is not just problem of India. So uh, even with uh, Middle East or 
the european market american market everywhere this is the same problem kids have everywhere so they they, they i mean probably a little bit in in us uh, the accessibility is a little higher but the option to switch the option option to explore multiple skills on a single platform on a single subscription is something that no other platform is providing at the moment and because of their business models they are not able to provide it as well so we are solving a global problem here not just problem of india and this is where we found uh, you know that the middle east market uh, specifically large schools uh, in middle east market are also exploring multiple uh, solutions to solve uh, problems which are which we are solving today it so we are now expanding into middle east market uh, we are partnering with very large uh, school chains in middle east market and growing aggressively there as well so from there uh, we would we would pivot to global market and uh, you know uh, access uh, to global market uh, very soon yeah and this is all because you are in the right ecosystem and you are solving the right problem that definitely exists there because there is a lot big barrier that exists that tunnel doesn't allows or maybe that brings a surprise to a student when a surprise element to a student whenever he steps into the right industry market right or get introduced Correct. and you are solving the you know biggest problem most of the entire ecosystem and kudos to you kudos to your work that you are doing and i really appreciate the work that you are doing and i you know i, I believe you, you reach them and success in this uh, your idea and as a uh, as a closing note as a closing remark if you like to share and think with our to audience it would be really appreciated you know I, i would want to share certain things especially with uh, you know uh, the the audience at large right so uh, today the world has grown to a level where uh, new job markets are opening every day and the older jobs are closing every day right so uh, we we speak of ai uh, eating away a lot of present jobs at the same time ai is building jobs of its own or its own right so there are jobs now which uh, helps train ai models so jobs are being created every single day new job roles new job functions are cre- being created every single day yes. and how are we preparing our kids for the new roles for the new technologies for the new jobs that are being created every day because what jobs are there today might not be there at 10 years down the line and that is what we need to prepare kids to so how do we teach how do we know that what what uh, kids can learn today so which will help them 10 years later right so we should not be teaching kids a single uh, academic uh, or uh, a single skill for that matter so we we should focus on teaching kids learning how to learn self learn or learning how to learn is a skill that we will need to teach kids that becomes highly critical for us to teach so that kids can learn any new thing that that is put on uh, the table uh, in front of them when when they go to a job market to uh, do something to solve a real world problem being an entrepreneur to what not so we should teach kids how to learn uh, then what to learn today and through ulipsu uh, the focus while being teaching multiple skills uh, the focus is also to teach uh, kids what they wish to learn and it is now time for all the schools to kind of uh, you know uh, open their arms and and look at skilling to be made part of their curriculum because world is changing parents are also asking for uh, parents are not happy with schools where uh, you know they are just scoring marks getting good rank parents are not happy parents are looking for multiple different skills what what new is introduced in that school to be part of to to make make it part of that school parents are looking for that kids are looking for something new every day kids are getting bored very easily kids are not happy with uh, you know uh, just the basic academics they would want something more every day it is now time to introduce uh, skills uh, you know considering the larger goal of of making kids future ready so and and that's what we are doing and uh, we would love to partner with uh, any company uh, platform organizations we are also reaching to non profit organizations working with them to to even reach to government schools as well so skill for everyone is what what a uh, focus is so we are working with multiple different partners to ensure that uh, the vision that we have set is is uh, achieved here 
yeah that's fantastic and you know it was nice interacting with you and exploring your you know your business your your area sector that you're working on your idea and uh let's i totally you know agree with every single sentence that you have you know put in here and i really appreciate your time to be on this call and you know discuss with it me with me so thank you for being in this podcast and thank you for all this uh, amazing insights and hoping to you know conduct some more podcasts and more discuss some more couple of startup talks with you so thank you for joining in sure lakshit it it's a pleasure uh, being a part of the uh, podcast lakshit thank you so much for having thank me you. here